night, the Stig drives some very fast farm equipment, I hail a taxi, and finishing with something that I'm reliably informed is a bit of a fan favourite around here. I'm Chris Harris, and this is the Top Gear Horizon Special. Ah, yes, the Stig, our very own UFO, unidentified fast object, the world's least obedient racing driver. Right then, the Lotus Elise, a 90s classic based on the age-old Roadster recipe. Two seats, engine in the middle, rear-wheel drive. Not an ounce of fat. This is what driving is all about. But this isn't just any Elise, it's a Sport 190, a tuned-up, stripped-out Elise for track days. Even the passenger seat is an optional extra. But who needs friends anyway? Friends are expensive and heavy. A serious slide there. Loving your work, Stiggy. Take as long as you like. I've got nothing else to do. I'm Chris Harris, and this is the Top Gear Horizon Special. Ah, yes, the Stig, our very own UFO, unidentified fast object, the world's least obedient racing driver. Right then, the Lotus Elise, a 90s classic based on the age-old Roadster recipe. Two seats, engine in the middle, rear-wheel drive. Not an ounce of fat. This is what driving is all about. But this isn't just any Elise, it's a Sport 190, a tuned-up, stripped-out Elise for track days. Even the passenger seat is an optional extra. But who needs friends anyway? Friends are expensive and heavy. It weighs well under 700 kilos and makes 190 horsepower from its 1.8-litre engine which rips to 8,000 RPM. Just listen to that. Of course, because it's a Lotus, it sticks to the famous philosophy of the man who founded the company, Colin Chapman. Simplify, then add lightness, he said. The Sport 190 also adds a full roll cage, just in case. Was there ever any doubt? The Series 1 Elise is, after all, one of the best handling cars ever made. The Sport 190 is its hardcore cousin, a road-going racer you can drive to work and across fields, it turns out. But if it's true agricultural transport you're after, we have just the thing.
Congrats! You've qualified for Horizon Winter Season. Conditions and competition will be fierce. Woolly seat covers and hot water bottles are optional. Oh, a BMW 1M. Great car. Hang on. That's my BMW 1M. Seriously, not funny. Who gave Stick the keys? Literally just cleaned it. That was gonna smell of onions. Odor stick. Does 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. My 1M. Stig's way beyond that now. Three litre straight six, 335 horsepower, two turbos, as much sideways action as you like. 100 litres. Turn left. The last time we leave Stig unattended, am I the only one who remembers Budapest? It's electronically restrained to 155 miles an hour, but it could definitely go quicker. to watch. Not at all. Look at... The smoke! Please leave me some tread for the drive home, Stiggy. Seriously, come on. It's a BMW, so of course it's rear-wheel drive. 50-50 weight distribution, too. It's a natural-born drifter. One of the best BMWs ever made this, born to be driven by me. Got to admit, though, Stig does kind of suit it. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Park it up now, Stig, and uh, mind the curbs. In 100 metres, turn left. 
turn right. Now, anyone else want to go? No? Don't say I didn't ask. Right, back to the actual script now, if you don't mind. This is Top Gear's track tour. It's a tractor, obviously, but with a 5.7-litre Chevy V8 making 500 horsepower. And here comes the Stig again. Farm Stig. Born in a barn, they say. Weaned by pigs. Can plough a field in under six seconds. There's a speed camera on the M68. Rumour has it, it only flashes above 87.2 miles an hour. Our tractor has been officially clocked at 87.2 miles an hour, making it the world's fastest tractor. But I reckon it'll go even faster. Stig. Those are 54 inch mud tyres, remember? They get a bit squishy through the corners. Nobody needs to get the harvest in that quickly. Here comes the speed camera. Hope they put some film in it. Whoa! Have you ever seen anything like it? That's a new tractor speed record and some impressively fast farming. If you want to spread slurry in a hurry, you know what you need. Now, though, it's time to hail a ride in something completely different. I called a cab earlier. Local company, Aisha's Taxis. Excellent service. Got me here in no time. Unsurprising, really. I mean, look at what turned up. Hands down, the quickest cab I've ever been in. Which got me thinking, how fast could this thing actually go? So I had a word with Aisha. Asked if we could borrow her cab for a trip to the seaside. To Bamborough Beach, in fact, where we could stretch the taxi's legs a bit. Although, I might have forgotten to tell her who'd be driving. You've guessed it. The cabbie will always get you to your destination very early, but probably won't be anywhere near where you asked to go. Those tyres must be worn now. Supplies less than in one piece, to be honest. In 200 metres, turn left. what I call a cab. No clattery diesel engine here. This is a V12 with over 750 horsepower, plus bucket seats. Beaded bucket seats, presumably. From now on, I say all cabs should have wide bodies and flared arches. Think about it. More stability, more speed, more downforce. 
more room for your terrified passengers. even has slick tyres for maximum grip on a bone-dry drag strip, so they should be interesting when we hit the beach. Turn right. the show you can slide almost anything if you know how even a taxi turn left in 400 meters turn right turn right turn left the stick there, I'd say we're nicely warmed up for the next bit. So here we are then. In the old days, daredevils used smooth, sandy beaches like this to see how fast their cars could go. Many early land speed records were set on beaches. Miles of space, nothing to hit. Sounds easy, right? Oh, look at that! Laying some pretty squirmy tracks there, Stiggy. That's what happens with 750 horsepower on sand. But that's the challenge here. Go as fast as possible all the way to the top of the beach. The thing is, there's something I haven't told the stick. Record rules say you must do two runs, one in each direction, before the clock runs out. Which means, Stiggy, pulling off the world's swiftest U-turn, which of course is when the handbrake comes in handy. ride from the stick there. Mini cab, maximum speed. Next time I need a ride to the airport, I know who I'm calling. And all of this off-road action has given me an idea.
This is Project EAT. That's EAT for E-Class All-Terrain. It's a modified Merc built by the Top Gear magazine team for finding bears in the woods. Not many bears around here, though. Mostly badgers. Still, there's definitely some terrain. Lots of it. All you need is a good sense of direction. Or not. Here's Stig again, looking lost. Terrified of maps, apparently. Inner compass points directly south. The EAT has a silky smooth V6 diesel. It'll do 155 miles an hour on the road, but where we're going, we won't need roads. First up, it's a trip to the top of Glen Rannoch, by any means necessary and against the clock, naturally. But don't worry, it has knobbly tyres and a roof rack for carrying extra knobbly tyres. 400 metres, turn left. Turn left. That's a four-wheel drive car on mud tyres, completely sideways. You'd do well in rallying with skills like that. Top draw drifting, I reckon. says you need an SUV to go off-road. The EAT has four-wheel drive and air suspension to smooth out lumps and bumps and everyday obstacles. Ancient burial mounds, for example. It is a Mercedes wagon, so it's tough. And if you really want to smash stuff up, there's even a pickaxe in the back. In 100 metres, turn sharp left. Recalculating route. In 400 metres, turn sharp left. That's some prop. For hang time, actual air suspension. In 200 meters, turn sharp left. It also has 340 horsepower, more torque than a cruise ship, and gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. to head way over there, to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up must come down. In 400 metres, turn left. Watch out here. I bet nobody checked the train timetable. Does anybody check the train timetables anymore? In 400 metres, turn right. In 
400 meters. Turn left. Turn left. It's full of home comforts, the EAT. Charges for almost anything you can charge. Cozy ambient lighting, even a portable espresso machine. Everything the intrepid explorer could ever need. Calculating route. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Turn around when it is safe to do so. about take the first exit all right all this adventure kits had a tiny effect on the fuel efficiency good job the roof rack holds two cans of diesel and there's another one in the back just don't confuse them with your drinking water recalculating route oh nice drive right down the middle of the fairway Route. On to the final stretch now. Just the small matter of getting up Arthur's seat. The clock's ticking, so better step on it, Stiggy. At the roundabout, take the first exit. In 100 meters, turn right. In 100 meters, turn sharp left. to the best of us. One more go should do it. The EAT has a silky smooth V6 diesel. It'll do 155 miles an hour on the road, but where we're going, we won't need roads. First up, it's a trip to the top of Glen Rannoch, by any means necessary and against the clock, naturally. But don't worry, it has knobbly tyres and a roof rack for carrying extra knobbly tyres. That's a four-wheel drive car on mud tyres completely sideways. 
You'd do well in rallying with skills like that. Top draw drifting, I reckon. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Well, it is a Mercedes wagon, so it's tough. And if you really want to smash stuff up, there's even a pickaxe in the back. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Who says you need an SUV to go off-road? The EAT has four-wheel drive and air suspension to smooth out lumps and bumps and everyday obstacles. Ancient burial mounds, for example. In 400 metres, turn sharp right. Turn sharp right. In 200 metres, turn left. Turn left. In 200 meters, turn right. That's some proper hang time. Actual air suspension. It also has 340 horsepower, more torque than a cruise ship, and gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. when it is safe to do so. Now it's time to head way over there, to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up must come down. Recalculating route. Meters, turn right. In 400 meters, turn left. It's full of home comforts, the EAT. Charges for almost anything you can charge. Cozy ambient lighting, even a portable espresso machine. Everything the intrepid explorer could ever need. meters turn left All these adventure kits had a tiny effect on the fuel efficiency. Good job the roof rack holds two cans of diesel, and there's another one in the back. Just don't confuse them with your drinking water. In 
400 meters, turn right. Recalculating route. In 200 meters, turn right. first exit. On to the final stretch now. Just the small matter of getting up Arthur's seat. The clock's ticking, so better step on it, Stiggy. 400 metres. Turn left. The top of Arthur's seat. No idea who Arthur is, by the way, or why his seat's so big. Nice view, though. Shame there's no time to stick around. Now, I said we'd be driving some British classics, and you don't get more British than a car built in Birmingham designed by a man from... Greece. Anyway, here it is, an original Mini Cooper S, an icon of 60s engineering. It was designed for cities, but this is the wide-body one, so we're going to need a bit more... room. And I know just the place. Ready, Stick? The Mini is cleverly packaged capable of carrying four people and their luggage. Hand luggage, presumably. on the famous Monte Carlo rally. It pretty much wiped the floor with the competition. Check it out. The ladies, the women fight for 
all my delight, but I'm the grand master with the three MCs that shot At the roundabout, take the third exit. The Cooper S was developed by a bloke called John Cooper, who also built F1 cars, so it had real racing pedigree. And it wasn't just Monte Carlo either, the British Saloon Car Championship, the Thousand Lakes Rally, even the Australian Touring Car Championship. Almost any time the Mini turned up, it won. In 100 meters, turn left. In 400 meters, turn right. 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 And here we are. I told you it was spacious. But I can bust you out with my super. We've got everything we need here. An airfield, the original rapid runabout, and the stig. I'm looking forward to this. Look at that. Laying down some rubber there. Not that it has much to lay. After all, tiny wheels mean tiny tires. Just showing off. What is it with minis and shipping containers? They sold nearly five and a half million minis, but only this one could fly, apparently. Mini punches well above its weight. It's literally unstoppable. Forget rallying, this thing was made for demolition derbies. Yes, I know this is all very good fun, but we really need to nail this bit. Turn right. 
turn right. In 200 meters, turn left. Turn left. In 400 meters, turn left. Turn left. In 400 meters, turn right. Turn right. meters, turn sharp right. Turn sharp right. You have arrived at your destination. Hey Dan. Welcome to the winter season. I'm putting together our winter showcase. If you can think of a driver with a little bit of experience, a lot of influence, and a train to catch, be sure to let me know, yeah?
turn around when it is safe to do so. Turn sharp left. 